Welcome back, everyone. It's Jaws Munch here, and we are going to be taking a look at a fantastic game that I got to play in uh, just the other day, and I'm really excited to share it with you because this is going to be essentially a basic air guide showing you guys how you can play Armada Air. And this is actually one of the first times I've actually gotten Armada Air to be good and to actually do something for my team. Normally, I'm terrible at it, and so I just wanted to share with you guys some strategies that I picked. And this is essentially going to be going over fast raids and frontline support as an air player. So let's go ahead and get through this. Some of this is gonna be a little bit rough just because it is uh, really, I'm not a good eco or not eco but i'm not gonna armada air player air player at all by any stretch i definitely prefer cortex and it threw me off guard because i was expecting to be playing cortex and i ended up doing armada just because i was busy on stream so um without further ado let's get into this so uh, I'm gonna skip past most of the beginning here because the openings, this isn't really necessarily an opening video. That's not really the purpose of it. Um, I will say that I mess up with my air factory here. I should have definitely built in it. Uh, fighter first to go scout the enemy air quicker and shoot down his air player but instead I, I queued up a constructor which is risky so if you're playing air you definitely want to be careful not to queue up air constructors before you have a fighter wall set up be, or at least like two fighters to defend it because those constructors are very expensive and they take a lot of metal um, and build time so you got to be very very careful anyway we go off to do some um, some air scouting over here. I just want to try to find out where their air player's at, if he has any constructors. And unfortunately, I miss him. I, For some reason, I thought the air player was right here in this position, but he actually was over here in this position. And I could have potentially sniped that uh, air con, but I missed it. So that was, a, that was a bit of a mistake on my part. Anyway, we fly over with another um, fighter. And this is just really bad positioning i was not focused as i should have been if you do uh target their air player though directly with those two fighters you could potentially shoot down a free air con and that puts you just a little bit ahead to give you a bit of an advantage anyway we lost our fighters and we are back over here and at this point i am just going to get up a basic fighter wall get some basic economy going and focus on the front line because or like the the air um protection because i'm, I'm already kind of behind because i threw my units away and that's never a good thing i i decide you know what let's try a bombing run i i might as well you know we're just doing a bunch of theory testing at this point anyway so i queue up a bunch of fighters and then i'm going to be planning on trying a bombing run and we'll see how that turns out for us anyway let's go ahead and keep going we got an uh a constructor out here a constructor turret that's very strong because you don't want a bunch of um build turrets or build uh t1 aircraft constructors because they are more expensive so you want to limit those as much as you can i only have one and i have a constructor turret here as well <clears throat> the commander is just going to be focusing the factory the whole time and that's to keep our fighter wall up uh, and keep a constant flow of fighters out. Next, we have uh, three bombers being queued up as well after these fighters come out. And for those who don't know, energy um, aircraft are very, very energy dense. They're a little bit metal, uh, metal low compared to other units but very very high in energy and you can see a lot of people are sending me some energy because i told them i'm gonna try to do a bombing run and so they're just giving me the little bit of extra energy i need to try to get that bombing run out um so there's not really any issues across the front we do end up taking uh pretty standard positioning here center is going to be a very pivotal role later on in the game uh, but for now, we don't really need to focus it too much. So we got our, I think we got one bomber being built here. No, we're still finishing our line of fighters. I think total right now we have how many? Let's see. Got a total of 10 fighters. And I think I want to go with a total of 20. I wouldn't actually recommend copying this play that I did. It was a kind of rough play. Anyway, we're just going to wait till I get my fighters out. This takes a minute. 
speed past this part to where the action is. Okay, we got one bomber out. We're gonna wait till we get three and then we'll go ahead and watch that bombing run. Also, I think I already got T2. Yeah, I did get a T2 constructor up, so that's gonna be huge. And I got those guys getting ready to build. Anyway, first off, we're gonna be starting off with our bombing run, getting prepared on this side, ready to go with a decent amount of fighters. Uh, one thing I didn't know, actually, and this is very important for those who might not know, fighters are much stronger at attacking if they have scouts with them because they have limited air sight and they can't target as correctly if they don't have scouts so if you do do bombing runs in the future make sure you put scouts with your fighters this is something i had no idea about and it actually uh bit me in the behind here a bit because i ended up botching this bombing run here you can see i have these bombers flying in and i was gonna try to bomb or i think retreat them but they just ended up getting shut down because I lost my fighter wall. So it was it was basically game over there for me. I lost so many units and red still has a total of, I think, um, let me see, yeah, total of 14 fighters and I am at zero currently and behind schedule on everything. So this is, this is just me theory testing right now. Anyway, um, so we get T2 going and I'm like, oh shoot, we're behind. Let's try to get this up going quick. So let's go ahead and speed up the economy side here. We have a lot of overflowing energy, so I'm gonna to try to use as much of that in energy conversion so that we don't waste energy because that's essentially the same thing as wasting metal. Okay, we got our all of our T2 cons upgraded, our T2 uh, mexes upgraded. For those who don't know, T2 mexes tr uh, quadruple your income, so four times your income. Very, very valuable, you need to prioritize you're upgrading your mexes as much as possible and then after that we're going to be going into uh, some fusion reactors fusion reactors are able to be uh, basically a large energy production and then you can convert all of that excess energy into metal so it's very it's the one way you can like infinitely scale your economy if you had like a million fusion reactors and a million energy converters you could have infinite metal regardless of how many metal extractors you have so that's why we're building a couple of fusion reactors just to get us that little bit of scale that we will need to do the next play so i'm just i just have a decent amount of um air our fighters going across here and you can see uh pink pink and purple our naval players they are having quite a fight over here so it's this ends up becoming an issue later on we barely survive on this corner and uh you guys will get a chance to see what happens there <clears throat> in a minute okay let's go ahead and skip past this this is the boring part of getting your fusion reactors built up in a little bit extra build power and we suck up our lab that is a little bit risky to do i do want to mention that you can suck up your lab for an extra influx of metal and it's okay to do that but just be careful because that is a bit risky because now i can't produce fighters if they end up sending a big bombing run in they could end up crushing my entire front line and actually killing us um so it's, it's a little bit risky to do that but it ends up working out for us here um as you can see pink pink is really putting her in is surrounding purple's base and so that's going to be one of my first targets when we end up uh getting up our our atomic bombers those are the ones that we are going to be going with atomic bombers fantastic so we have a little bit less energy conversion than i would like um obviously wasting isn't the best but we are sending it to our team so it's not the end of the world and we've got our first uh couple we got our first T2 factory out, and we're going to be producing 40 fighters, two bombers, and one sonar. This was after some people mentioned to me that sonar is, uh, sonar planes are very, very valuable for fighter walls. And they give them just that little bit extra damage required to actually, uh, actually target the units. A little bit extra range to target the units properly, so huge play there and you can see here we're in a very good position we're building as much as we can and we have plenty 
plenty of excess metal. We have we're only using like 30 40 metal and we jumped up to 60 I think because we're using build turrets or building build turrets now uh, But we have a ton of metal income and so I'm gonna try to get build power up a bit at this point Trying to match build power with our metal income is important Here we're losing this front. Uh, let's actually take a look and see what all are the fronts we're losing here We're losing this C completely um, yellow's pushing in on this side, but thankfully he's holding decently well, but green is holding not really doing any aggression yet Pink is on the verge of pushing in to purple purple is just barely holding off um, And not really Not doing much more than just holding He does have a decent uh, few lasers weapon or laser turrets coming up here Which will help but it is a bit of a struggle on the front line on this side so we, we're losing this lake we're losing that lake we're holding this front we technically lost this front as well which is also terrible this front is basically destroyed and um where else do we have we got fizz, uh, fizz over here he's a great player but he is only maintaining control he's not really doing any uh, aggression on this side so uh, kind of stalemated slash losing but thankfully we have an atomic bomber that came up here and these guys are fantastic able to do tremendous damage in a single swoop um, so you're gonna see I'm going for a very strategic in and out attack with the atomic bomber so I'm looking for large groups of units that are pushing on the front line I'm bringing in a huge fighter swarm to defend and I'm launching atomic bombers uh, onto the front line while also on occasion hitting their uh, fighters themselves I don't really mind if they uh, knock down some of my fighters because then that's also dwindling their fighter wall anyway looking for high value targets here high value targets and sending my fighters in first another big explosion there killing like six or seven destroyers in one shot here we go we're coming over to help pink out he is in a bit of trouble as well so we're gonna be coming in to try to save save him by the skin of our teeth here boom that was a, a little bit of extra damage not perfect but as you can see, let's see how many kills this thing has gotten so far. We have 18 kills, and those are high-value targets. Those aren't cheap units. So very, very worth on the front line. And we're going to start to do a little bit more aggressive raids with it as well. This is just the beginning of this strategy um, because our front lines are in such a disaster. So I want to try to help out. Um, fizz on his side because he does have a lot of enemies over here. I think I might have ended up going for uh, red though Which which is fine. We go for red we get we don't really get any high value targets there unfortunately But the enemy air is not really playing Properly to really defend against this strategy. They're not pushing aggressively enough into my raids So I'm able to kind of get away with it for free Essentially, which is really really cool Let's Decrease this a little bit alrighty so I Think oh, yep. We're planning here. It is. This is the one I was talking about where we're going to try to knock down um, Yellow so we're pushing up We got a decent amount of fighters I would definitely recommend that you you try to spread your fighters out a bit more than what I did here and I didn't really get any any good value out of that bombing run. It was kind of a trash bombing run I should have had scout uh, Scouting mixed in and I didn't really so it was a, a bit of a botch there unfortunately But at this point we got another atomic bomber out Because with our mix what we're going to be doing. Um, let's try to see the queue. I ended up with here We ended up doing a 20 20 fighters one sonar and two atomic bombers now what I would recommend actually as a better grouping would be 40 fighters one sonar one atomic bomber and then you just cycle that over and over again and another great thing you can do is you can build EMP bombers and have those guys 
do a patrol into the front line. And what that will do is if you set them on, if you press H, it does a patrol command, and they'll go back and forth and EMP bomb any units that come into range. So that's something I would definitely recommend. Add some stilettos into your mix and use those as an extra special defense. Anyway, we tried doing another bombing run here. It didn't end up working out. Um, we did end up getting a commander here, which I completely forgot to uh, look at. We, we got to... <laughs> We got to drop a bomb on the commander, which is fantastic. We we basically have no fighters because we failed another bombing run. But we do have a, a lone bomber, which ends up, I think, getting shot down here. Oh, no, he's still alive. Dropping a little bit extra damage on the enemy. Got some more fighters coming out to defend him. But yeah, uh, that like these bombing runs might not seem like they're that like important or significant, but I honestly believe they did change the tide of the war to now the point where we have like purple is advancing. He has control now and uh, pink isn't able to easily push through. Anyway, we're going to end up getting some more uh, high value targets after we get a couple more bombing or a couple more fighters in. We're kind of fighter weak at this point and you definitely need fighters to help support I think I might have changed my ratio here yeah I added a couple more fighters to it as well so let's go ahead and uh, skip this area okay here's another here's another run we're going for we got three bombers this time and we're positioning I want to do a raid on this uh, sea area because I know there is uh, a large potential of knocking out that uh, naval base there. So I'm going to end up trying to wreck it here in a minute. I'm just waiting for my fighters to stack up so that they don't get countered. Ooh, that atomic bomber did some damage. I don't think we have a chance to catch him though. We send in and we just decide against it because it was too fast. Okay, let's go ahead and speed up this process a little bit we're just waiting for those bombers to go okay here they go so we see we see this base and we think my goodness what better option than to absolutely decimate it and we turn back we end up taking a bit of damage here which is unfortunate um, one of our bombers almost dies but I think we keep it alive and we're a little bit low on fighters as well, it looks like. Which, this is kind of a risky play because now I don't have any bombers because they didn't have any fighters that came with them. So, obviously, some some areas I could improve on. But, as for, like, the first time I actually do well with Armada Air, I'll take it, you know? I'll take it. So, let's go ahead and uh, boost to the next drop here. Oops. Got a little bit longer here to go. But yeah, like I said, this is a little bit too bomber heavy in my opinion. It would have been better to have a few more fighters soaked in. Okay, and we're off again here. And I am tr I really want to break into Fizz uh, to help Fizz's uh, positioning here, but it is just so tough. There is, there is a big line of anti-air and it is really tough to break through. Anyway, I'm gonna end up trying to get through, but it just doesn't end up working out very well for me. I think we are actually going for a sneaky play here. Attempting a push. No, we're just still repositioning, it looks like. Yeah, we're repositioning and then we're gonna end up going in. Yeah, I didn't realize that they had a bunch of lead, uh, Lich as well. I thought it was only me. I know they had a couple, but I didn't see that many of them. Because they got off a couple nuke, uh, nukes off as well on my team. Which is unfortunate. Anyway, we get, we're going to end up trying to push in here. But if they have a... That's one thing about Armada is they don't have a way to really push in hard if the opponent has lots of anti-air because you can see here there's a couple flak turrets 
and they just shoot down everything so quickly. I only get one shot off and everything else is dead. And I don't think it was like that weak of a play. I had a decent amount of fighters, um, but it just wasn't enough. It just was not enough. Anyway, it's evened out on the front line. You can also see over here, this is important. We've got um, a raid coming in. This ended up killing a lot of the economy with a marauder push here. These marauders doing massive backline damage here. I think they got two Aphis. And it looks like the team ended up calling a resign vote. I don't know if they ended up actually resigning at this point though. I think they waited a little bit longer. Yeah, but it's looking bad for the red team at this point. They had an advantage for a while, but it's just over. Getting off another sneaky... Sneaky atomic bomb drop right here. Oh, look at this beautiful hit. Boom! Massive damage. Massive damage. Ten kills on this one. And it looks like there's a lot of, uh, they said they like full send on my bomber. My goodness. And this is actually a bad, bad position for me because I was very low on bo on fighters as well. And it's because my ratios were messed up. I, I should have definitely gone a little bit more fighter heavy on my ratios. Anyway, we're continuing to do a little bit of scaling here. You can see we have a total of five fusions now. And just scaling over time as you play is a great option just to continue to be able to produce even more. You could even try to go for a fusion or advanced fusion, and that might be a little bit better if you want to scale heavily. But at the same time, that does have a little bit of risk involved because it does take a lot of metal. So, um,. It's up to you on how you want to scale, whether you want to go for a uh, couple fusions and then an advanced fusion and a whole bunch of converters and then just move on to a massive amount of scaling. You can do that, but it, it's just up to you on what you think will work for your games and how much pressure you are actually dealing with. Okay, let's go ahead and see here. This is where I think I, I, I got 47 fighters now. I'm like, okay, enough. We're going to have a lot of fighters. <laughs> We're done with this fighter stall So we're just trying to build up our fighters and so another thing that's interesting here I wanted to point out is you may think well Where is your fighter screen and I don't have to have a fighter screen really as as hardcore and the reason being is They have spent a lot of fighters trying to hit my rating and so by me being aggressive in my like smaller raid attacks they are never able to pool up enough fighters to actually do a significant bombing run like a, a mass map bombing run because if they did that they would just end up um letting their whole team die on the front line so it, it does create a little bit of an extra pressure that keeps the um the enemies at bay and this i was trying to get a scout on whether or not they had a an anti-nuke because I didn't get vision of it but I think I ended up botching that scouting run a bit which is unfortunate up oh, here's another lich coming in I think I'm trying to go for a bombing run again while also trying to get a scout out to see if they have oh oh yeah this is when I went for the the um, Oh man, I missed them. Those guys are so lucky right now. We got the second one coming in. Oh, that one did a little bit more damage. Still, so many snipers. Yeah, that's, I messed that one up pretty good. Partially because I didn't have any um, defense. I didn't have any air, uh, air defense there. Anyway, I'm pushing in here at this point. I think this is all scouting purposes. Or to just verify how much they actually have or to I don't know I don't know why I did that I think it was scouting yeah I'm trying to get vision here so if you go to player view from my vision it doesn't look like they have any um, any anti nuke at all but they really do have one in the back corner because we were gonna try to nuke that base because of how strong it was in that corner 
Yeah, those snipers are absolutely destroying Fizz, unfortunately. I, and I call zero anti, and I launch it, or I think we end up launching the, the nuke here soon. Yeah, here it is, the launch. And that's because I called zero anti from what I saw, but it was a bad call, unfortunately. Yep, there it goes. Quite a pain. We could have, could have got it. Boom. But the anti-nuke launch stopped it in its tracks. Anyway, we ended up cleaning up those, um, couple of those snipers pretty easily there with another atomic bombing run. And I think we're going to turn our attention over to this side here. Yep. Because we haven't, well, you know, we're just playing a little bit more of a support role. Trying to help bomb out high groups of units. There it is, another excellent bomb. Unfortunately, they take him down, but still worth it. Still got its value for sure. And we, you know, it's kind of just a thing where you have to rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat and slowly but surely it'll get a faster, faster flow as you continue to scale. Another f uh, bombing run coming in. I believe I end up going for their front again as well. Yep, there it is. Hammering it. And this time I keep the f the bomber, which is nice. But we're cranking out bombers pretty fast now, so it doesn't even really matter. Oh, I was gonna... I think I was planning on going for the commander kill there, but I lost sight of him. So I just chose to go for the, the factory instead. Which is still a good play. Still, still good value there. We lost one more bomber. And you can see across the line, still not very many fighters. They do have a single bomber that's harassing on their front line as well against us. But overall, we're doing pretty good. And we can see we have tons of pawns that ended up pushing in on this side. So we probably... <laughs> yeah, this is essentially game here at this point. I think they're going to end up resigning. Because these pawns and then we also have a titan that got to the enemy side Anyway, you guys uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments if you've tried a similar strat with the, the leech Attempting a push um, a, Like a, a weave in and out of combat type of play and also what you think of this strategy if you haven't tried it and Let me know uh, see if it works out well for your games I can see it being a lot more valuable on very widespread maps because then you can use the advantage of speed and It just creates a little bit less pressure uh, to the front line for you So that could help you in some of your games. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and check out the video that's uh, going to be on one of these sides somewhere and See if it's something you like. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the battlefield.